Hello and welcome to the Art Department Podcast. We are at episode 14 and uh, it's me again, Jan Urschel here and Emmanuel Schu on the other end of the world. And today we're going to kind of start a new series and uh, it's going to be about inspiration. And I think uh, inspiration and reference is one of the most closely guarded secrets of any artist or designer, but we kind of wanted to shed a bit of light on that subject and we're both coming, I think, from a little bit of a photography background. And we wanted to make this first episode about something that's really close to our hearts. And like you can see in the background here, we're going to share some interesting personal stories and um, artwork. And um, I mean, look at this handsome boy here, barely in high school. And uh, I think Emmanuel is going to start this off with a uh, explaining a little bit about what's going on here and why he's in the bathroom <laughs> uh yeah so so yeah like like jan's saying uh you know this is a i i think you know i don't know exactly how many part series we're gonna go for but uh it's definitely um i, I thought it was a series that that really needed to be looked at because uh you know seeing what inspired us to do what we do um, might help a lot of people understand mm -hmm. how to use their own inspirations, you definitely, know, and, definitely. and, and I think photography is one of them. Um, you know, for you, architecture is going to be another one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you know, art, uh, for me also, yeah. uh, you know, so, you know, we're, we're going to do a couple part series of just different mm. in after you see our work, we'll be sharing sort of, uh, our inspiration yeah uh, and we'll get to that the inspiration part in the sort of second part of this mm. but if we start now uh, you will see uh, me in my first shot wow. uh, when I was around 14 15 years old I don't Jesus. remember I, it was literally ninth grade uh, and right. that's you know me in my glory uh, and you know self-portrait meant mirror <laughs> exactly and bathroom so that's like the early 80s is it uh, er, early yeah, mid 80s yeah, okay. yeah er, early 80s early 80s yeah um there were no and, digital cameras right no, People. no digital camera this there was is dark my, uh, rooms yeah my dad Film. just gave me his trusty minota cool and said go and have at it uh good luck and so <laughs> here I am. That's my introduction to photography was I went to an art high school. Art high school. I, I mean, I got lucky, right? I went to a school in L.A. Uh, in, you know, in the mountains of the San, San Bernardino Mountains in, mm -hmm. in near L.A. And, and it was art high school. And, you know, I didn't realize that it was art high school, but oh, it was okay. a photography cl class. And okay, there I went. Uh, and, you know, only later did I find out that it was actually a very well-known oh, okay. um, art high school. But you didn't, like, you didn't choose to go to art high school because you were so no, in love no, no. with art, right? No, no, no. Yeah. I, I, well, the, the, the simple, uh, <laughs> Wait. the reason I was there was because I was a really bad student in Hong Kong. Oh. And uh, I basically, you know, I was always a bad student and okay. I got kicked from school to school and place to place. Oh. And this was the place that my dad could put me that I, that would accept me. So did you? So it was a boarding school. Mm, yeah. Did you got? Did you? Did the whole family move to? No, no, to it LA? was a boarding school. So boarding you were school. there alone. I was there alone. I got you know. I said, "You're going to America." I was like, "Ah, what?" And and then because you were a I troublemaker. Know, oh my goodness! I, I was a troublemaker, and I've been kicked out of you know multiple schools, and you know, basically, yeah. Uh, my dad said, "Well, you're going to America, and call it a day." So I came <laughs> to this high school, and this high school itself is not an art, but it's just a boarding school. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was affiliated with an art high school, which was like a mile down the road. Ah, okay. So we would take our classes there, uh, you know, both places. So it was awesome. Um, cool. And, you know, this is my first shot ever and obviously all digital. And this is where I got hooked. Mm, um, I took, you know, the classes all the way up until my senior year. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll show you some of that work. Mm. Uh, if there's anything interesting, I'll, you know, we just move on to the next shot sure. um sorry 
some of the stuff. Okay, yeah. You know, like, so, you know, that's from our first role of film, you know. Oh, I, the first role of film, okay. Didn't really know what I was doing, but mm. I was just, you know, like, okay. But there um, was some artistic sensibility behind it, no? Like, if you just have a camera and you don't, you don't just take, start taking photos of stuff like this, no? Like, um, I think it just depends on whether you, you know, like, I think everybody has a, you know, point of view. And I guess that was my point of view. And, but, you know, the funny thing is, you know, you shoot the whole row and, you know, like that was the one I chose to print, but, you know, there's a lot that then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Well, it's, curation um, is next, important. Yeah. Curation is important. Wow. Um, so this is just, you know, like a, uh, you know, a log and, you know, we, we were, you know, in the mountains, so I would walk around and shoot mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, the thing with photography is that you shoot and then you bring it and you print it and then, uh, uh, and then you, your teacher or our teacher would, we would critique it, we'd talk about it and then we'd, you know, do it again. And this one came out sort of, you know, what I, I really liked it. So, mm -hmm. uh, well now let me yeah. ask though. Um, what, what, what would interest me is that, I mean, okay, so you, you took that photo there and then you probably in the dark room, you made some adjustments. Um, but would you, did, did you, did you develop the photo like this at that age or did you yeah. come so, in I mean, back we taught, later? Uh, and we were taught about, uh, you know, dodging and burning mm -hmm. when we were taught, uh, you know, you know, what kind of paper to use, mm -hmm. uh, how to add contrast, how to lower contrast, all that kind of stuff. Mm. So, you know, that was part of our mm. schooling. And when you're in boarding school, it's boring. <laughs> and when it's boring, guess what do you do? You spend more time in a dark room because what, why the hell not, right? Mm. So I was in there dodging. I mean, I would one, pr like I would print, I think I, I had printed this one maybe 30, 40 times. Mm -hmm. Like try different bur burning and dodging. Oh, okay. And for people who don't know what burning and dodging is, it's just when you're printing it on an enlarger, you're 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 covering certain areas to give it less uh, light, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and therefore making it darker. Uh, I think uh, people and, only know it as a setting in Photoshop, but I mean yeah, that's where the really setting comes the from, thing, right? right? <laughs> that's where the setting comes from at the yeah, name. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's where the name comes from. So uh, so we would you know move our hands like this because if you just put your hand there. Uh, you're gonna, you know, make that one spot really sharp edges. Mm. So you, you move it around like this. You have little, uh, little gadgets you can move around to, to, to dodge and burn stuff. So you know, it was a, interesting. And then you know, you have a lot of learning on how to expose your film mm -hmm. uh, because you can, you know, go all over under how you expose in the camera, how you uh, process the film. You know, so it, it was a lot to learn, but it was very interesting. Um, next. And so, you know, I would go home in, in Hong Kong. I would go, I would go home uh, to visit and I would bring my camera and all the film. And, and this is my uh, younger sister. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, we would be at the beach and I would just take pictures of her. Uh, and she was one of, you know, sort of my earliest muse. <laughs> she was great, nice. you know, she was awesome. And, you know, incidentally, <laughs> She doesn't look like that anymore. God, that makes me feel old. Still, still your little sister, but yeah, she's Next. also grown. And that's like a picture in Paris. Mm -hmm. I will go visit my mom, mm -hmm. uh, and this is the Notre Dame. Okay. And uh, you know, it's just the. But I, but, you know, by then I was already taking. Uh, you know, it'd been a couple years already. I was taking pictures, and mm -hmm. I, I was really into I experimenting. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see sort of the candles and everything. It looks kind of smudged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks almost like a painting. Um, and it's because, uh, you know, I was like, uh, I would process the film, but I would try to smudge it with my hands oh, while okay. it was processing. You know, I tried everything just to get more creative because I, I just wanted to see, you know, what I could do. Mm -hmm. um, and it came out with this kind of cool effect. Uh, next. Like I would even pour drinks on my negative sometimes because I mean the, the teacher would be like that's crazy that's sacrilege you can't do that yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like Whoa. why not but it came out with some interesting look um, so this is a picture of actually the high school like it would snow um, in winter uh, and and you know this was my uh, f uh, photography buddy you know we would he was in the class with me and we would take pictures and he would be my model and yeah I mean cool. next. 
and so this this is one of the pictures I really really enjoy. That's my dad. Oh, okay. Um, and and you'll see later on in my inspirations why I like stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But oh, I know. Uh, yeah, I can see that totally. But let's leave yeah. it for the other for the viewers to yeah, experience yeah. But, later. I mean, this is, my dad and and what you see that boat behind him is mm. one of his big projects mm -hmm. uh, and he actually uh, invested in a, a like a like a big minesweeper and made it into a, a, a club uh, oh. so he was an entrepreneur mm -hmm. he he, he uh, uh, you know did things that nobody really did and and this boat uh, club thing which is in the background gave him you know a lot of joy but also a lot of headache um, and this was the maiden voyage of this boat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it had been converted from a minesweeper to a club and this <laughs> is the first voyage. And, you know, I just took this picture and I, to this day, still my favorite portrait of his. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, uh, that's the story behind that's it next. And, you know, this is my dorm room, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, I was like, wow, you know, if, you know, this is just the dorm room with a bar of soap. And, and I, for some reason, I really like the picture. Uh, I don't know, like, if you're like, yeah, if you're like in a boarding school and, and uh, you're getting bored and um, you just work with what you have, right? So yeah, it's, and I mean, it has sentimental value, but it's also a reflection of... of, of um, yeah, yeah, and in the end, you look at it, you know, it's got a lot of compositional elements that you don't even realize you made those mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah and you look back and go well okay um next oh you know and so you know i was already quite a uh, you know and i'll get real personal here but i was a quite a um i don't know what you would call it not i wouldn't say i was very sensitive as a kid <laughs> i mean i'm still really sensitive as a person but i was really sensitive as a kid and i i had a lot of emotions mm -hmm. uh and when you you know like most kids in my class were taking pictures of, you know, birds and, you know, like <laughs> just stuff around, you know, mm -hmm. because it was just a class of them. For me, I was almost like burying my soul. Wow. I was really using it to work out some emotional mm -hmm. issues <laughs> or something because mm -hmm. that's when I even when I look back, I'm like, that's kind of not normal <laughs> for kids. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm like 16 here or something, 17. Um, but yeah, I, I really want, I, I guess I kind of showed a lot of my emotion in my photography. Mm. It feels, uh, it feels it, very mature actually of you to, to, to approach something like that. I mean, usually the usual 16 year old doesn't, doesn't do much in terms of self-reflection. No, I mean, not to offend no, any no, 16 mean, year olds I, yeah, listening they, here, but, um, it's, it's not something <laughs> you encounter very often no. Yeah, I, I guess I, and I had to do that. I mean, my classmates were shooting the girls and the yeah, birds yeah, yeah. and you know, this and that, you know, and trees, and I was shooting this. So, you know, uh, that was just what rang true to me, you know, mm. this kind of things. Um, how did okay, the, next. how did the, um, before we move on, how, how, how did that resonate with, with uh, the teachers, if at all? Uh, so the teacher, did they see anything uh, in it or were they just like, oh, yeah, okay. This so is the just teacher like... put a lot of effort in encouraging me mm -hmm. to try different things, to push me along mm -hmm. because you know i was really into it and i spent a lot of time in the dark room mm -hmm. um you know to to understand how to do this and also just how to to you know push my uh how to express something and and she, she was very uh encouraging and mm -hmm. uh, incidentally i just found out her email like maybe two years ago and oh. i emailed her and she remembered me wow so I think, you know, I mean, it was a big deal because mm. I was hooked on this. Yeah. This is my best class. Wow. Everything else, I was almost failing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Next. So, uh, you know, I would shoot, you know, this was my, well, later on, this would be my prom date, actually. Oh. But uh, she was just a friend and, yeah. and, and uh, uh, you know, she would model for me. You know, I would get people to model for me and do different things. Mm. Um, if I find it interesting. Favorite, yeah. I mean, a lot of what you show has a very, for me, it has a very European French sensibility. Like I look at these pictures and I, I feel like, like this fits into like a, like Truffaut movie or something like that. Right. That, that's, that's the kind of vibe I'm getting from this, which is very yeah, interesting. You being you from that. Hong Kong and, and 
uh, you live in LA, right? That's not something I would I would necessarily expect. Yeah, but, I, but you know, that's funny you would say that because I am half French. Oh, okay. Uh, so, no, oh, your no, mom is you, French. Oh, your mom is French. Oh, so that's why you saw that picture of the Notre Dame because I would go visit her in the oh, summers. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I had no idea. So I was already kind of immersed in that culture, and I had lived also a year in Mexico because I got kicked out of school. <laughs> so they sent me to my mom. <laughs> so, so I was in Mexico, and and I also got to see that culture. Uh, you know, I went. I, been to France many times so oh. you know obviously that had a big and, and I'm a you know I, I think the French uh, culture uh, I vibe with a lot oh, okay. so maybe that's why um, okay we all next, learned something new right now okay next yeah. one <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is you know uh, in one of the uh, trips in LA you know like just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay desert take a picture uh, <laughs> But I mean, you know, you can see compositionally it's already yeah, yeah, starting yeah. to, Definitely. you know, uh, get somewhere next. And more of, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, the dry lake. This is one of our camping trips, you know, with the whole class. But, you know, I would always wander off my camera and, and shoot mm -hmm. stuff. Um, next. Um, and I, I did this a lot, which is Double set exposure? up a tripod. Oh, right. uh, yeah, I, I would set up tripod. And then I, I would just be like, I, I don't know. I, I think I had this sort of melancholy kind mm -hmm. of just standing, looking at out, you know, uh, I did this a lot and I would spend time just doing this uh, with myself. And mm -hmm. this was one of the ones that I, this was in actually at Malibu. Mm -hmm. um, and this was right before Art Center. Uh, this was while, oh, you know, okay. I just got out of high school yeah. and I had, I was about to apply to our center and right. and I just kind of took it anyway. Wow, this is uh, fantastic. Uh, next. So, you know, now I'm just playing with a lot of different stuff. So this, you know, I'm at a, a, a university called Pepperdine. So right before our center mm -hmm. and I, you know, I went, I went to these, you know, I, I just, whenever I saw good light, I would just go and, you know, I would, I, I would just automatically be drawn and take pictures there. And this one, I kind of played in the dark world of double exposure. Um, right. It has a very 80s Japan vibe to me for some oh, reason. Okay. I, I'm, I'm a lot into the music of that time and, uh, and uh, the culture at that time. So it, it feels very... It could also very, be the way I'm dressed. Yeah, that too, that too. It has a very like Sakamoto feel to me, um, which is great. Next one. Yeah, so uh, yeah, please. Okay, so on this one uh, is actually uh, a very interesting um, self-portrait. You know, I, 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 you know, I always, always was doing self-portraits with a tripod, like I have told you. And um, so, you know, the way I composed it, when you're looking back, uh, it, it, it does look like I was really disturbed. And this actually was, you know, days before my accident. So I... Uh, you know, I, I, I was in, not in a good state because I had, you know, sort of broken up with mm -hmm, girlfriend mm -hmm. and I was in a bad shape there. Mm -hmm. And 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 I was just, you know, um, I was just not in good space. And you mm -hmm. can see that, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's, you know, kind of. It kind of really got me to to uh, see the power of photography, because I would, mm -hmm. you know, I'd be in the hospital. I look back at all the stuff that I've done and I'd be yeah. like, oh, man, um, and and uh, you know to me this is still a very special um, photo yeah. you know and, and you could see uh, you know out in the distance is kind of you know from the waviness goes you know to a calmer waters it is very symbolic to me mm, yeah, so yeah. um so it's great so this is sort of in, you know like what you've just seen it you know encompasses sort of all my uh uh sort of you know pre-art center years right. and and a lot of those photos were used in my portfolio to get into Art Center. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously not this because I was already at Art Center when I did this. But, right. um, you know, so just so people would know, um, you know, that's kind of, you know, what got me into Art Center. And if we'll go to the next uh, folder. Okay. So what do you see now, uh, you know? It's in a folder called iPhone, so it's pretty uh, straightforward that these are <laughs> iPhone photographs. And the reason why I, I actually made a Facebook page called iPhone Photo of the Day. And, um, and I did that because 
I was having an argument. Well, maybe not an argument, but I was having a discussion with a bunch of friends who were talking about the newest lenses <laughs> and the, the, the best cameras. And I said, you know, everybody, you have to realize that it's not about the equipment you use, but mm-hmm. it's about what the shot is and what the photo is. Um, okay. It could even be blurry. It doesn't matter. And they were like, no, no, you know, like this new thing is the best and that thing is the best. And I was like, no. Yeah. And they, they were, they were, you know, you, you've heard that before. Of right? course. It's like the never ending yeah. discussion. I mean, there's always that thing about, oh, so if, if the technology doesn't matter, why do all professional photographers have like the, la- the latest gear, right? What, what, what kind of argument is that? But of course, like, um, the the professionals that didn't buy that gear and then got good because of the gear, right? They were already good yeah, before right. and the gear just allows them to do their job more efficiently. That's the difference. But anyway, go yes, ahead. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. And 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 uh, that I couldn't put it any better. Uh, and, and a <laughs> lot of, you know, a lot of people think they're, they're good at photography or, or you know, because with photography, it's different than drawing or painting, right? Mm-hmm. If you really don't know how to paint, you can't just pick up a brush and paint something nice. It's just, mm. it's not possible, right? Unless mm. you're going for abstract. Yeah. Uh, but with photography, you can make a good shot because it can be, you can get lucky. Yeah. Uh, but a good photographer can reproduce those results consistently and reliably, mm. and they can express their opinions and views within that format. So that that's how I see it. So I, I said, okay, you know, you, you know, great equipment, all this. I'm going to go the other way. I'm just going to use the iPhone. And back then, I think this was the sort of iPhone, I don't know, e- e- you know, two or three or something like really back then. Right. Um, and it was, you know, it wasn't a, a great camera, but I think I thought, well, it's enough. Uh, and they were like, no way, no way. So I made a page and I shot every day just to rub it in their face, <laughs> and, and partly, partly to, to ask myself whether I could do that, you know, what, what would that look like? Uh, I mean, it's still it's still on Facebook if people want to go see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've stopped doing it. I, mm-hmm. I did it for three years, I think, and wow. then that was it. Um, That's a long time. Yeah, and 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 uh, so anyway, let's go through some of these. So this is uh, my wife, or then my girlfriend. Uh, or I actually go, yeah. Um, Should I go to the my next girlfriend. one? Yeah. Well, both are. Yeah. But go go back one real quick. Yeah. Uh, like this is just her at her painting sort of studio. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, it was one of my favorite portraits of her because of what she's painting. It's almost like looking at her. Um, it, it's mm. her other side looking right. back at her. It's really interesting. And, and yeah, so fun. Next one, please. And this is just, you know, another one of her. Uh, and, and some of these are really low resolution because back then they were low resolution. But right. that's okay. Um, you can tell what it is. Exactly. Uh, it next one. It doesn't take away from how powerful the um, photos are. Yeah. This is my nephew. Oh, okay. uh, we were having dinner and the light was right. And mm-hmm. he's a, a, a very uh, charismatic guy. And he's thinking I, very deep thoughts right now. Yeah. Yeah. And But it's like the light was right. And I was like, great. You know, um, next. Uh, this is at Ocean Beach. You know, see it, shoot it, you know. But every day I would be looking for these moments. Mm, right. And it, it kind of got interesting because every day you'd have to shoot one and and find the moments. Yeah, and, yeah. And then you, yeah. you usually, what usually happens, I mean, for me, when, when, when you do something multiple times, you kind of, you have, you have that, those preconceived ideas and, and, uh, um, Framings and compositions you usually go for on the usual kind of topics that you you like, but yeah, there, yeah. there's but always the that thing. point. There's that point where at some point at some point you get bored and you run out of your usual tropes. Yeah, and, those, and you're forced those are the time to. You're like, what am I gonna shoot now? Yeah, and then you you hit that spot <laughs> where where actually you're trying to find something new and and it, it becomes kind yeah, of terrible. Yeah. But you need to kind of push through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. I mean, I had to go through a lot of that because every day i mean i'm not the most i don't go out to a lot of places so you see the same things mm. now you got to do the same things over and over again so this was outside of my house this one wow. um and that day was just you know it just was by chance quite lucky mm, yeah of course <laughs> um and uh, next 
And this is the Milwaukee Art Museum mm -hmm. where I went for like a table tennis tournament. Oh. And I went there and there was these bunch of people there. I was like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> nice. I mean, you know. It has it a lot of drama. Like, it's very, very simple and right. But it has a lot of drama in it. I feel these images. So, yeah. I mean, and next. Again, that's me driving home going, oh, I got to stop. I got to take a picture. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what it is. Right. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, you know, that is literally was outside my house, like maybe, you know, like not not far. Mm. I, mean, I mean, it was still in the car here, but that, I, you know, I had that kind of fog rolling over the hill thing. And that's what inspired me to do the uh, the Blade Runner. Oh, right. right I remember. Yeah. Thing. So, yeah, it's funny. Next. Oh, that's at, at our art museum in San Francisco. Mm. Next. So that's just, you know, I had a, a flat tire and the guy was mounting my tire. <laughs> awesome. Wow. But it was like, oh my God, that's perfect. Yeah, it looks <laughs> amazing. I shot it, you know? Quickly, iPhone, um, take a picture. Exactly. The, the best camera is the one you have with yeah, you. Yeah, right? exactly. So, that's the right. You know, that's the quote I was looking for. Uh, and then that's at the MoMA in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Again, just people walking up and I was like, oh, that's cool. I, you know, and you, you know, if you're looking out for these, you'll find them, mm, mm, you mm. know, but it's just a lot of people aren't really looking and they're not taking the time to just, yeah, that's the thing, right? Kinda, you know. It's, it's all about just quickly take a snapshot here and there, but if you really want to, um, hit the, really the right image with the right light at the right timing, you need to, you need to be patient. Yeah. And, and sometimes time. you have to wait for mm. it. Yeah. Okay. Next. And that's just, you know, I, I think I went to have lunch one day and I saw this fan just really liked it. <laughs> so that was the, for that day. It was, that was it mm. next. It becomes almost like a diary, right? Yeah. I mean, and you know, this is just, uh, I think this is the Bay bridge. Yeah. Next. Yeah. And then that's at the, in San Francisco again, I saw this, you know, it's, this is a statue mm -hmm. and I, you know, it really looked like our concept. <laughs> the stick man. People with a stick. <laughs> So I just took a picture of it and, and it's cool, you know, next. And then this is, uh, you know, this is like a newer iPhone now. That's why the resolution is better. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, this is just a Bay bridge. Uh, and I really like this photo. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that it's, uh, any worse than any SLR picture, you know, I mean, it's the bridge is very photogenic. Right? Next. Wow. And this is probably the last one. You know, this is the Golden Gate Bridge. It's before Godzilla comes. Yeah, it's just like really, you know, I mean, you catch these things and I said, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. good shot. No, it's about noticing, the, uh, but it's also about, I feel a lot about um, being aware of the moment and noticing these things. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of amazing things happening uh, around mm -hmm. us on a daily basis. And, and we often just don't see it because we're sitting in front of our computers, right? And we have, we're very focused on a task. Um, but going out Absolutely, and, and yes. taking the time to really quiet down and and look out the window and notice the things that, that that are around us, I think it's a very important and very important skill I think to have for for an artist as well. So um, oh, yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's not, like you said, like oh you see it and you notice it and then you take the opportunity to really quickly take a, a picture. You could have you could have easily said like oh I don't have my SLR with me so I can't take a picture right now even though you like, yeah, you have like an amazing camera on your phone anyway with you in your pocket. Right. And you just don't, don't like yeah, when, yeah, when yeah. I go running, like I, I notice, like I, I try to notice, right. I mean, often I just have my headphones on and, 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 and run and, and just try to keep my pace and these kind of things. But then um, more often than not, like I try to, to run a different route and, and you notice things. And even, even if it's just the sky, right. Which has a particular shade today. Yeah then you can at least take a picture, right? So, and, and it really, it's really good. Is there another one here uh -huh. or? I think that's, that's it, it for this okay, folder. Let's switch to the next one. All right. So this is now uh, sort of the last folder of my more contemporary work, let's say mm. in the last 10 years. Uh, and this, you know, this is, I, I love shooting my wife. Uh, she inspires me. Mm. Uh, she's a great model, very true. Uh, and it's very easy to get very uh, good portraits, mm -hmm. uh, let's put it that way. So this was a shoot we had um, before she had you know, her tattoos right. and stuff right. like that. But 
it's uh, uh, it shows her. I, I feel like this shows her a lot uh, as a person. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So that's just some. Um, I, I don't know what I should. This is probably a SLR. I don't really remember to be honest with you. I mean, the, um, the, for for all the the technical stuff, right? You you do get nicer skin gradations and all these kind of things with a better lens and yeah, everything. So you you can't you can't just uh, ignore the the technological difference in the sensor size and the quality of the glass. But again, like. As we have seen, like you, you knew what you were doing um, for for quite a while. So um. next, mm. so that's wow. her with, uh, you know, that's her back tattoo now, which is actually quite a good contrast to show them. Yeah, before that. To it's each it's other. it's an interesting not only a memory but kind of like the, uh, it's it's very interesting, because yeah, I mean yeah, tattoos and, are irreversible, and, right? So, um. and you can see in the the poses the i think you know this one is like i i lit it in a way where it you know i didn't want her face to be showcased mm. uh and i wanted her back to be showcased mm -hmm. um but also the the way she's standing is a lot more confident right right yeah with the tattoo because that's you know she's finally able to reveal who she mm -hmm. is um because that's what she feels about tattoos is is really natural to her uh, actually, without tattoo, it actually feels weird. So if you go back <laughs> to the first image, right. it, you can see it feels different. Yeah, it and, feels, but these yeah. were taken years apart. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so so that's why portraits intrigue me. Yeah. Um, and you can do a lot to control it with lighting and. Yeah, I mean, it shows stuff. that you really know her as a person, right? And that's a very like how how do you, how do you tra how do you translate how do you express someone's character um through a still photograph right that's incredibly difficult and that's why yeah and that's that's where that. the, that's the kind of you know photos i am drawn to right. is when you see more about the person and you'll see it in our inspirations mm -hmm. anyway okay that's uh and then that that's another one that's very very that's 90s the... japanese uh album cover <laughs> kind of thing yeah which is great next and so this is on one of my trips to Paris, mm. um, and you know, I, you know, I go back to the hotel and I see this guy with his dog, and he's just completely in love with mm -hmm. the dog, you know. And 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 and, and I guess it's just the two of them, and he's a homeless guy, um, and it just caught me. And I, mm. uh, it's just one of those things where you know, be aware of the moment, and yeah, you can, yeah, if yeah. you catch it, you know, it's something magical, and I really enjoyed this. Thanks. And so this is this is in Paris in another trip. Mm. Except this lady, I, I like the ambiguity of it mm. because you really don't know. But she's sitting on a suitcase. She's actually she looked like she was homeless to me. Mm. Um, because if you sat there longer, she wasn't just like you know when, you know that was all she owned kind of thing. Um, so it, it just uh, yeah. I just enjoyed that shot. Um, this is my friend. Uh, you know, this is after our center, after my accident. I came up to um, to go to school here at CCA, mm -hmm. uh, and this is like shot with a like a large format camera, wow. like the ones that you put over your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one you look down you know, into and like, right? Yeah, that was crazy. It's a huge negative, mm. um, and but it, you know, and and you you know you can change the the focal length, uh, you know, the tilt tilt shifts mm -hmm. uh, very easily uh, but you know it's just one of those things where you know he was a really interesting mm -hmm. guy um, and I just kind of had to lead him and he was already doing stuff that was very sort of him mm. uh, He's, uh, he, he fits into that happened. again he fits into he fits into that time perfectly like it feels very Hong Kong I don't know to me like Hong yeah, Kong like, pop star <laughs> kind of thing Leslie Chong I don't know yeah, could be hanging so, out with him uh, next so this is a, a, another really favorite portrait of mine. I mean, obviously, I'm putting my some of my favorite mm -hmm. shots, and this is of my mother. Uh, so if you didn't know, I mean, this was in uh, Paris. So this is the last shot I had of her mm -hmm. before she died. Uh -huh. um, and and you know, it's you know, I love the shot. Uh, she she's there. She is with her partner. Um, and uh, and my younger sister, which you, you saw her. <laughs> oh, she's in the dark here. Off to the right. Yeah, but you know, this is really just 
you know, to celebrate my mom mm. before she passed. And, and, uh, you know, she, she was already a lot skinnier than she used to be. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a, I just thought this was a really good memory of her and her time. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't like to see it because they go, Oh man, you know, like people who know her because they say, well, she, you know, she looked not as vibrant as she used mm -hmm. to, but I don't think photography or any kind of art is meant to just always portray the best looking right. things. It's also about honesty about and revealing. The, yeah. Honesty, right. the reality, mm -hmm. the truth of it. Um, and, and that, you know, she had her loved ones around her and she was out and about and she was, it was a good day, you right. know? That's, that's so, important to remember. Anyway, right? I'm getting super deep with all this. All right. That's very <laughs> so, interesting. Um, and another trip to, uh, to Paris right. and this is where, you know, this, I saw this shot of all these guys, you know, like o older guys with their white hair. <laughs> very and good I contrast. Like, yeah. You know, this is genius. Like this shot is just presented itself. They're like glowing, and, right? And, it's like... Yeah, they're glowing. And I think, you know, like all the old friends are all getting together to play mm. and have fun. And I was just like, wow, if I could have a life like that in the end mm. and have my friends around me and just enjoy my afternoon, that's just perfect. Right. Um, so, yeah. So really like that shot. Mm. Next. Oh, I don't. Yeah. So this is. Yeah, yet another Paris shot. I, I love Paris. Yeah, I, I mean, can tell. Uh, you can't really, <laughs> like, you know, but this one, I saw this couple, this older couple walking, you know, just walking. Mm. And I was like, you know, I, I had to shoot it. Mm. Um, and, you know, it, it's one of my favorite photos when it comes to, you know, like I, I have a big print of it um, and it makes me feel good looking at it. Mm, mm, mm. Um, it really makes me feel like that's hope. Yeah. yeah. I mean, th what's really, what's really interesting in all your photography is I think the, the, you have a story for every photograph and you have such like a uh, good memory and deep, deep thoughts about like really recalling what, what this moment in time meant to you. Right. And, uh, and it's interesting to see that, I mean, honestly, it feels like you, you do this for yourself and nobody else. And I think that's why it's so strong. Yeah. yeah, and I definitely do. And, you know, I, I don't think you, I, I don't think I've, I have never worked as a photographer mm -hmm. for money. Yeah. Like I've shot for, I've been commissioned, but I, I never accept money because I don't want to be shackled. Yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. do my, you know. It's so important um, to have that. Is there yeah. any more? <laughs> uh, no, I think that's oh, it. Huh? That's it. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, that, that's the bulk of my work. I mean, I, I pretty, I, I put a lot of, I mean, Instagram is probably the place I put all yeah, my work up. But this stuff is wasted on Instagram. Of, I'm sorry to say. Yeah. That's why I'm not a big Instagram mm. guy, but I, I, I think I will, um, have a site coming up. I mean, I'm really getting inspired and I don't know where it's going to go, but, um, but if you want to see more, go to Instagram for now. And I think this needs to go on, in, in galleries and on coffee table books or whatever. <laughs> I think that's the best place yeah. because you need time yes. to appreciate that, right? You just can't, you can't just yeah. like flick through this, whether it's Instagram or something else. It's, it doesn't make sense to flip through this. You need to see this on a wall and take your time and, and, um, experience this kind of stuff. Right. And, and even like, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and, and or, I, I mean, I, and it's, it's one of those things that even, you know, getting to see a printed thing, mm. it, it's so rare these days, right. you know? And your relationship. And I want to. I mean, later on in the inspiration stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go into a lot of um, inspiration, my, my inspiration reference that I discovered through physical contact with it, right? I didn't, okay, I, I didn't, okay. I didn't see the stuff on, on Instagram and then like, oh, this looks cool. Like... Right. That's not how that yeah, goes. It's so different. Instagram is on, you know, <clears throat> the biggest thing is on your phone. And it's like, that's not how it's meant. Yeah. I mean, some things are meant for small, some big. But I mean, this thing I have printed out like huge mm -hmm. and it really makes a difference yeah. to walk up to it yeah. and go, wow. You know, anyway, okay. Jan's turn. Yay. <laughs> so let's change the background. So now it's, it's my turn. I think my... I show a different angle of what I do with photography and um, I don't have any of uh, any like self portraits or um, portraits of, of people uh, 
like relate um, like um, people around me or relatives or family or anything it was for me it was never never uh, something like that but more more of how i perceive the world around me like um and i i started actually out um not taking pictures of any people at all um which through which i could kind of um i think just just i i loved landscape photography architecture photography but i felt like always there was something missing in 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 my photographs and it, it made made everything very impersonal and very um very sterile i mean it it, it was it was okay but like um the whole I, f I feel like there was always something that held me back where i'm like i don't i don't know ho how to approach people i don't know how to how to deal with a with a with a human subject and i think that's that's also partly the reason why i'm very much drawn to environment design and these kind of things i mean uh, that's still what i do a lot but um through i think through photography in a way i kind of um try to try to um kind of face that that um shortcoming of mine i felt like um um, because you, you mean you you could always put that lens in front of you, and which kind of puts that barrier between you and the subject, um, as in a way kind of like to I don't know protect yourself or um, not have to get that close to a subject. But um, so through, I, I actually in Germany where I grew up and where I started photography again, my dad gives me a camera. I I kind of didn't. Um, I stuck to like landscape stuff and, and architecture stuff and and I don't have any. This is obviously the film days, right? We're talking um, about. the really really late film days. Actually, my dad got uh, he was always he always had a camera, um, and he got one of the earliest digital cameras, and that's actually the first one mm -hmm. he he gave me to just play around with. But that was like I don't know one or two megapixel or whatever, um, oh, and wow. actually. I did the opposite then. I, I got the digital camera um, to play around with, but then I actually bought a film camera um, as my first mm. proper camera. And uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm terrible at keeping old archives of my stuff. I kind of regularly do like a cleansing or whatever and get rid of everything I don't like, which is not, not good. Don't, don't do that, people. It's, it's important. Like, uh, now that you look back at your own stuff, like from, from high school, I feel like, shit, I, I should have... Like, I don't have anything from my days back then, and I, I should have really kept more of that um, in, in, any, in any case. But so I, I bought a film camera, and these pictures that you see in the background right now is not, is not um, something from that far uh, back. It's maybe um, 12, no, maybe like 14 years ago um, when, when uh, I really uh, was the first time I, I moved to Asia. Um, and um, through, I think through my experience being being completely a foreigner in Asia, um, I kind of felt more at ease um, approaching different subject matters and and really getting over that hurdle of of shooting shooting people, um, which which is always something I, I wanted to do but never knew how to uh, never knew how to approach it. And I don't know maybe because that of that isolation and and I lived in 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 Osaka in in 2005 and in an area where there were no foreigners so um I felt like um like I can I can I've, it felt like I could do stuff I could never do at home just purely because I was I was somewhere else not that I wanted to do like stupid stuff or stuff that um um would be weird but just it felt like I could shed my old self kind of and um try mm -hmm. something different right and and that's that's what I tried to do, and um, through my my travels in the region, um, that's really still my biggest inspiration, and that's where I just my just and also because I've lived here for for most of my adult life. So this, this was in Japan this, this was Hong was Kong. Singapore. This was this was a, a trip Kong. to Hong Kong, um, and um, yeah, I I mean honestly, I didn't have a clear focus. I didn't have any art education. Um, I I just had the only experience I had was just like running around with a camera and back then there were no mobile phone photography right so I always had to actually have a physical camera with me um, and and 
again, I'm, I'm, what I'm not trying to do is here is, is show off or say that my photography is any good. It's like, it's like yours. It's, it's an ex not, I'm, I'm saying yours is way better than mine. Um, but it's, it's just an expression of, of, um, what I do, what I, what I, what I like to do without any monetary, um, like yeah, thought I in, mean, the, in, the, in the back of my head. Right. The, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, so I'm yeah. going to cycle, I'm going to cycle through some of these. I mean, I, I love your compositions. I mean, it's just, so I think mine, it's very you too. Yeah. You know? And I don't know, like I, I, the, the, the thing that, that is really difficult to capture is, is again, that, that moment of, um, an expression or like just like, uh, an expression of a person and what they're thinking and, and, um, like, like yours, it's like a memory of, of a time and a place that I was mm -hmm. together with my then girlfriend and now wife. Um, and it, it kind of felt really like it freed me up a lot to, to just do things. And there's, there's extended periods where I just took pictures of people. Um, and I've, I've, to a certain degree, I, I, I think I regret not exploring that more. And now it's getting even more difficult um, to travel, um, which, which is really a bummer. But in any case, um, so these were photos taken during my study in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. And I think this was, again, just things like I, I, I love street photography. Um, and I, oh, this is great. I, I was doing it even, I think, before I knew what that, um, what it really, what street photography really is and what it is about. Um, mm -hmm. And and uh, it, it was funny in a way because I was looking at uh, later through Instagram. Actually, I, I follow a lot of Japanese uh, um, photographers and, and street photographers and even some of the more famous old school um, street photographers. I felt like there was a there was a commonality, not in terms of quality, but kind of in, in what I what I was trying to express with the photographs I took. Um, and so I, I, I compared some of the stuff that I, I shot way earlier and, and um, some of the inspiration I found way later. And I, I always found these commonalities in it, and, um, which was kind of interesting, which is when you take photos for yourself, you, I think just as with any art, you're never really sure if what you're doing is, like, is right or is wrong or what you're trying to do. You, you're trying to go this journey alone and and um, i mean there's many insecurities right that you encounter along the way but to to see that um, there's more people thinking and seeing the world similarly to you is is, is very interesting and almost like almost like a, a validation or something um like okay you like what what you do has has merit if 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 not for anybody else just for yourself i don't know um i think yeah, humans no, always it, look for outside validation i think right um I really thanks, like this. thanks and um i mean the the old tsukiji fish market in tokyo is just uh in in a microcosm of interesting characters just going about their day and they're probably sick and tired of weird foreigners <laughs> taking pictures of them but uh, again it's it's also a, a document for what is now gone because they have moved the fish market um, to somewhere else and demolished what what was there, so I think these were taken around two thousand and eight, um, and uh, I don't know. It, you, I, I kind of I kind of love to look back at old photographs and see what I did, even even if it's if it if it just took a, a split second to take a picture. Um, in terms of what I did there with composition yeah. and, um, and, and, and contrast and all these things. And I, I like to revisit all the photographs I took um, and try to push them in, in different directions. Um, so again, that was, I think, also the same time period. And uh, this was, again, student days. Um, for some reason, I, I'm always... Uh, we, we show a lot of black and white photographs here, which is very interesting. Um, but... It, I don't know. There's, um, I, 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 I shot all of these in color, of course. They're digital. There's, I mean, it doesn't make. Oh, there's okay. no, okay. no black and white. But um, I try to really push the the focus on the character and the and the the graphic um, layout of it, um, mm -hmm. in, instead of getting distracted by color. I mean, I have I have color photographs later as well, but um, yeah. 
it's also like yeah student days 2005 and whatever um and uh, in the beginning when i started to to take photographs there was this weird idea that you have to i don't know where even that idea came from but there was that weird um approach of like you have to get it in camera as close as possible mm -hmm. to the final result and touching or altering it in any significant ways would would not make you like a true artist or something. I don't know. I don't even know where that came from because it's complete nonsense because every professional, like, like you said, dodging and burning and, and pushing really um, what well, yeah, you have it's seen. It's just like photo bash, the whole photo bash but thing. I guess because, the whole... yeah, yeah. Be, be, because I didn't come from a, from a photography or art school. Like I, I never knew about any of these kind of things. Um, like I just thought like, oh, you have a camera, you take a picture and that's it, right? Um, but later on i i really really played strongly with yeah contrasts and and reframing post, and really pushing like yeah post processing and pushing the image mm -hmm. to to distill the message that i was trying to um uh, to to bring across right um oh i love that yeah mm -hmm. that's kind of like what something you would do right the the high contrast and i mean the the, the resolution is terrible because i really cropped heavily into it um to but that's okay. to, to get that's rid a, of the everything whole point yeah. this thing is simplicity and you get it immediately mm -hmm. yeah this is great and uh, yeah i think the idea of of what you show and what you don't show and that balance between um between yeah trying to create a story through a single image um always very interested me i don't know like I, again th these are not like i i didn't go through quite as much trouble to curate uh, the best shots i thought um then it would have been never ending um but i just kind of tried to to grab some images from times that that um, really marked like uh, it, that made a difference the difference for me in how I approach photography. Um, I think this was like in, a, in the in the Thai area of Hong Kong um, where a lot it's actually a, very close to where the Kowloon Wall City used to be. There's a there's a little enclave of Thai immigrants um, and um, it, it's quite an interesting area. And the the famous sleeping at work photograph from Hong Kong. Um, I mean, Hong, I, my wife used to used to work in Hong Kong, and um, I used to uh, go and visit her while I was studying quite a bit. And of course, like she was busy at work, so I just took my camera and walked around the entire city, basically um, in the sweltering heat. Um, so uh, I, I kind of really explored Hong Kong by foot um, for for many weeks and months. And this is something from uh, Korea. Uh, fish market i think in pusan this was kind of like a, a bit later um i think that must have been like around 2014 15. so i was already working um, as a concept artist this kind of stuff um, and this was Ooh, this was kind of like uh, the the this is what i used to do a lot um before i really got more comfortable um shooting people and um so i did a lot of this kind of like really architectural stuff and and um, again very graphic and um play with different lenses i mean it really that really does remind me a lot of your work too yeah yeah that's so that, that's kind of related to got into there right i was doing a lot of this kind yeah, of like, stuff like, at shenzhen yeah. shenzhen before <laughs> it was cleaned up um and the 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 smog was heavy over the city and that's also something from hong kong again um really mm. really push the um the contrast here but i i, lo I love that that uh, i don't know there's something about it it's not the most perfect image but it, it captures that moment um i think more than anything for me it was at the end of a long day of walking basically all like through through the entirety of hong kong island um and it was at the end and uh, close to where my girlfriend was staying and yeah that just kind of just that's the the moment that I remember from from back then. Awesome, it's a great shot. And again, a lot of a lot of Hong Kong stuff. Hong Kong is fantastic, <laughs> in its okay. own right. Well, you're making it fantastic too, though. Yeah. And um, again, something from from the uh, fish market in Tokyo. Um, again, kind of similar uh, themes. I think you can 
see here that I was exploring. Again, uh, um, very. I, I don't even know what this event was. There was just some event in Kyoto, and I think that was in 2005. And there were these three ladies that kind of belonged together, and they all just have these amazing expressions on their face. Um, all very different. What the hell they're looking at. Yeah, because they're all they're all looking in different directions. Um, and yeah. I don't know if, if if they were aware of me taking a camera. It was quite a long lens, as you can see. So I'm not sure they yeah, were yeah, yeah. they were aware of that. But it's just um, I don't know. But I mean, this is like one image out of a hundred that captures a moment that uh, is interesting, right? Um, and here only like um, again, not not a perfect photograph, but I kind of noticed that. This is a tram? Uh, that's the tram in Hong Kong, yeah, the, the double decker tram. Yeah, okay. And and it mostly doesn't show anything, but it's somehow these two guys in the top, they kinda I don't know, they look pissed off at me taking a photograph or whatever, and I only noticed that um when I was actually looking at the pictures on my computer. And um but yeah, that's the kind of That's really interesting framing. Yeah. I really I think it's very effective and it's a really interesting way to cut the frame. Yeah, yeah. So I, I straightened it a lot because it was kind of wobbly and I, I do that a lot in yeah, just straightening lines um and just to mm -hmm. I don't know, to really flatten the image a little bit and um yeah, it, it looks. Yeah, no, I, I like it. I like the treatment. And yeah. Oh, that's very. It, this this is Hong Kong. Right? Yeah, yeah. Of course, the mar it's a market, and I just I just thought it was amazing that this guy is just watching TV and has this. I mean, it's just kind of like a flea market vendor kind of thing. He's selling all of these all of these things, but um, I guess there's a bit of like curiosity and and just showing the foreignness because something like that you don't see in Europe. Um, so it's 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 interesting to me and that so this is some some of the later uh, stuff where um i mean it, it's kind of from a similar period of of uh, taking photographs it's just a, a a different approach in um i think revisiting some of the shots i did and kind of like thinking like okay how how where's the where's the line between what i do commercially and and what I what I just take photos of and, and where's the commonality because I never I never really did a crossover like I tried sometimes to upload photos onto my social media feed of what I took of, of the previous stuff I took and of course like nobody likes that kind of stuff like it's 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 just a wrong audience um, and I felt a bit like in the beginning I felt quite distraught and it was like okay so wait this stuff i do commercially is that's what people like but then the stuff that i that i feel more deeply connected to people don't like um but while i was still quite young i was like i i, I took offense in that and i was like w mm. what's going on like this is all bullshit like i shouldn't be doing this but this wasn't that long ago not, you were feeling yeah this. not not that long ago right um um but it feels like ages ago and uh, and so I still remember you. This was like maybe six yeah, years exactly. ago. Yeah, exactly. Somewhere around that. And I was like, so so where, where does that leave me creatively, right? It, it left me very empty. And I was thinking, so so what do I do with this, right? And it, it took me a while to just realize, um, just it's just the wrong audience. And um, it doesn't mean that the the art or the fo the photographs are bad or what I'm tr really trying to say is bad or anything. It's just that. Um, it's just not for, not for, I, mean, I don't know, not for consumption. I don't know. It's just for me and it needs to stay that way. So, I mean, I, I kind of stopped uploading a lot of, a lot of stuff um, just because I, I didn't see any more point in it. Um, and it, it, it doesn't mean that just because I don't upload it, it's not, it's not worth anything. Right. Um, and it, it's, it's, but in this, in this culture that we have where you have to kind of get upload everything and, and get a validation for everything. Um, it's you feel weird not sharing it, and and you feel like it loses it, it loses it loses its value if it doesn't have thousands of likes, which of course is is completely not true. Um, As we know from the last, yeah, yeah, episode. yeah, right. It's it's that weird weird thing in your brain that. Um, um, but anyways, um, it, it, it's still worth exploring. No, but I mean I that's think. really interesting, mm -hmm. and and honestly, I I really enjoy. See, I mean. The, the earlier stuff I haven't seen, so I can say that I really enjoy <laughs> that. And I think it's a shame to not show that work because I think that's kind of who you yeah, are. Yeah, maybe you maybe know? it needs to be shown in a different way. 
but um, who well, knows, right? you know, you can show it in a way, and and whatever response you get, mm -hmm. you get. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I have a separate exactly. Instagram photography account, um, or maybe I, I, you know, maybe I'll go make my own website. Yeah, yeah, you know, or something like that. Share right? it that way. You know, I mean, no likes needed. Yeah, right? exactly, I mean, right. So anyway, so th this kind of this new series I did was kind of trying to explore the, the way how mm. I can bridge the gap or, or if there is a gap between um, concept art, what I did and, and some of the photography. And so it, it got it got some interesting response, I think, um, and kind of um, encouraged me to do more of that. So I, I took a more like a filmic approach to it um, and um, even shot some little films with with my camera <clears throat> and uh, really again try to i mean it follows the similar themes um, it's just it takes kind of like the the people out of the equation right so it's kind of the opposite side of of um, landscapes architecture cityscapes um and uh, but it, again it has the same kind of ideas behind it um the same kind of compositional elements. But, you know, I, I mean, I really can see that this, this is, you know, this is also helping your concept. Of course, art. of course, a lot, right? You know, it's so, so clear uh, because this is what you do. And, and I always thought when I looked at your, oh, that's nice. I, I always thought when I looked at your art, you know, your concept art, that it felt very photographic. Oh, thanks. and then when you show some of your photography, I was like, "Wow, okay, no wonder that's where it comes from." That's good. Like that. You know? <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's how it's I mean, but to you be. know, like that's an interesting shot. You know, even if that was for Ghost in the Shell, yeah, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, you just add different elements, but that is cool. Thank you. So, and again, it was just um, yeah. trying to capture some moments and and um again there's there's no uh, i mean i love this that. stuff i mean it's how to make the the sort of the dead come alive <laughs> you know? yeah i mean I yeah go ahead a piece of concrete mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but it's it, it, it has so much character and flavor i mean i love that yeah it's interesting how these how these people in hong kong kind of uh, take their uh, rooftops kind of as as their personal space and uh, make them into little i don't know uh, terraces and living rooms because they don't they don't have any other space um yeah 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 so. and it but it's it takes you to see that yeah to capture that which exactly. is quite interesting so this is kind of all i have and um i think we should be we will we, we'll move on to some of the inspiration and then maybe you you guys are going to see where where all these different things come together for us so here we are on uh, pinterest so we made a special pinterest uh, account for the art department podcast where we're going to share um, our references inspirations uh, with you so you can all look at these um, separately and uh, quietly uh, um, from your own computer and save what you what you find interesting and we have uh, collected some of of our uh, i think favorite photographers and stuff that inspired us really and and kind of brought us along this journey um and we want to go through some of these so i think i'm just going to start uh, not maybe not necessarily um chronologically the first one? i mean not necessarily chronologically i think for me i i chose these because um they they kind of um, I got inspired by these at certain times in my life. Um, so I think one of the first, um, coincidentally, one of the first that, that kind of uh, I found out about was um, uh, James Nachtway, uh, a famous um, photographer that, that got um, popular through um, his war photography. Um, an interesting, interesting way to, to get into it, right? Um, but I think I noticed him mostly through a documentary um, uh, that came out i think in 2001 and which i highly recommend people to watch it's it's really amazing um so let it look well, uh, okay before you yeah. dive deep into this um just so that people will know that uh uh you know we're i think a lot of this uh, uh photography you know you know what we did but also these inspirations coming up is also a lot of stuff that you you can really um, take to heart and really see whether it can help you further your art um, and, and really look at it as a way to introduce um, new um, 
ways to look at things f through different people's eyes, you know, and these inspirations. And if you guys have any uh, of your really cool photography that you think is, uh, 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 you know, that's inspirational, to, to also leave that in the comments so that we can check it out, you know? Mm. Oh, definitely, yeah. So, yeah, anyway, uh, take it away. Yeah, so... Um... I think I'll, I'll 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 show some of the the, the some of them a bit larger, um, and go through them. I mean, there's not anything in particular that it's to to a large degree also kind of what I found um, on Pinterest uh, to to show here. Um, and I, I'm assuming everybody uses Pinterest. Uh, I'm trying to figure so out if there's a way to make this bigger because the images are quite small. Um, yeah. I think the only thing you can do is like like enlarge your browser. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends on that image, but uh, sorry that I'm you know, kind of uh, uh, flailing around here. But anyway, you guys can can look at it more in depth and closer um, right. in, uh, on your own. I just want to uh, mention some of these. So uh, the the photographs he does are very interesting. Um, he's almost I feel like a, an art wall photographer. Um, very very strong compositions and um, um very strong uh, uh graphic layouts um but also i mean he, he his 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 photographs are very much in service of of the story he's trying to tell and the the conflict he's trying to highlight with this right he really tries to lend his uh, fame and um skill to um, highlight inequalities and, and, and crisis in the world um, and that was that was uh, just uh, an incredible mm -hmm. um, um, experience for me to to see um, this kind of uh, the, like art being in the service of that and um, I mean these kind of pictures I mean it, it is from from a uh, from uh, again a, a war zone but this image looks like i don't know some kind of classical um painting, painting you would see something. in a in, in a museum and um that level of of skill in in that tense environment and and i mean not that i, I was ever going to be uh, uh doing this kind of job but um it's really um it's really interesting um how how you can maintain that um that sensibility in in a situation like that and that was um really something that um, really interested me in terms of um, just um, uh, yeah, no, it does, yeah so, I definitely gonna and, have to check his and, out um, his work but out at more. the same time um, I was also already very much into uh, I think uh, it, this Japanese photographers and how they how they kind of really bend um, um, like art photography i think i was I was quite into and um um i mean there was some street photography which came later but um i want to highlight these two uh photographers um that really go deep or like a, a lot of them are really into art kind of photography um and i think the, the first one i kind of found by accident is is hiroshi sugimoto and i mean he is one of the most world famous uh, photographers for he does incredible mm -hmm. large format uh, photographs and he has a couple of series like the the ocean series which is really what what he's famous for massive massive large format prints of um uh, just like massive how massive like he, he he does large format photography and these are printed on like five by five meters or whatever they are massive oh, wow. and they have detail mm -hmm. all throughout um and and right. it, it was really interesting for me to see like how how people were using photography not as a as a way to just take picture and that's it but as a as a way to create art right um in camera mm -hmm. and that that was really interesting and i mean these these are incredible to see um, and he has these these series of like landmarks around the world and the photos actually blurry um which i thought is just like i mean whatever he wants to say with that is 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 interesting but how it's executed on a really high technical level i mean some people will just say this is blurry photos and it looks like shit i yeah. i can do that kind of thing but um again the, it's not only about the way uh, it's shot and the thought behind it but also how it's presented and he did these like empty um empty concert halls um it's it's uh, and and cinema halls from like a, a, like a period gone by and it, it's 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 super interesting um 
how he approaches that. And um, he did these portraits. So he did portrait photography to make these people look like a classical painting. But these things are photographs and that's pretty amazing. Um, so almost kind of like taking what Kubrick did with, uh, with Barry Lyndon and just kind of like overdoing it completely with all the costumes and everything. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, and the makeup and, and whatever. So another thing um, where heavy, heavy photo manipulation was, was is part of it is Andreas Gursky. He's a, he's a famous German photographer who, um, this I think is the most expensive photograph ever sold. Um, got millions of dollars and, and this of course is a photo of a, he takes, so what he does, he takes everyday things and it makes them larger than life. So he took the, an image of a, of a, uh, images of a supermarket and just made it a hundred times bigger. Like the shelves and everything is just like larger than life. Or he did the, the beaches here and, and just made the beach like 10 times bigger again to always drive home a, a certain point. And he, he took, um, like here, the James Bond islands and in, in, in Thailand, uh, I think the Dubai or Abu Dhabi racetrack, um, and then um, I think here, that th these, are, these are really interesting photographs. Again, this guy, I, uh, I didn't find him through Instagram. A friend told me like, hey, this guy has an exhibition in, in, in like the nearby in Munich where I lived. And these are incredible. They're like five meters high or higher. It's crazy. Wow. And they have insane they amount of these. Person yeah, yeah. First. And he, he has so he has this James Bond series where he just makes it like crazy big and just adds way more. Um, or like makes the racetrack like completely nonsensical and 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 huge. Um the like a North Korean um event. Like but it has now like a hundred thousand dancers or whatever, right? So he does these things all the time and he has a fantastic series about he made a pit stop. Um, Formula One pit stop looked like a Caravaggio painting, like mm. super widescreen, like 10 to one aspect ratio with the pit stop. And then you have everything lit like a Caravaggio painting and like printed like 10 meters wide or whatever. It's, it's incredible. Um, so these are the kind of things that can really um, um, made me like rethink what, uh, what photography can do. Um, and I was very, so the next wave of kind of what I was looking at was um, um, this guy, a lot, again, a lot of Japanese. Um, he, he does very interesting. He's, he's very, very on the technical side. Um, so he has a series of photographs taken with ultra high speed cameras of um, um, explosions and um, like frozen in time. Um, and that is really interesting how, again, he takes a technical, um, a technical challenge um, and makes makes art with it. Um, he also has uh, this image series of um, kind of like the, the the water droplets on a on a on a, on a window, um, and focusing on those instead of focusing on on the background, or these images of canals in in Japan where he places the camera exactly at um, at the middle so it becomes kind of like a, a really straight line dividing the top from the bottom and he he makes the uh, the composition in a way that it's really half like one to one um and that that kind of i thought that was really interesting how they again take the technical exercise to like uh, the nth degree and and that that really interested me um, another again I found these through books in bookstores I didn't find a single one of them on Instagram okay um, and through th through curated uh, bookstores right where I, I I knew they have interesting books that somebody else selects and presents nicely right um, and um, that is very important I think and um, this is a famous series of, of uh, 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 like these ship breaking in Bangladesh um where he did like a crazy uh, black and white um, but i mean if you if you look at that it's like 
you, you could make a concept out, out yeah of that exactly kind of right so i mean you know, it's like you could apply it my to my work. inspirations come from from all this kind of stuff right so I mean, that'd um, be so freaking cool yeah yeah know? it is it is but it, this is real life i mean it is uh, that's what's yeah. even more interesting right and he does i mean he does so much more than than that and he's a famous polish uh, art photographer um, and this incredible um, viewpoints of how people see the world, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and um, I don't know. This stuff gives me this so much more than um, than looking at, at at I don't know art of books from from movies, uh, which I don't yeah. enjoy yeah. at all. Um, and here, I mean, he's a he's a more contemporary, very famous uh, Canadian mm -hmm. photographer. Um, again, I saw his stuff in a gallery, and it, it just blew my mind. And I think if you look at these, you can also tell that it blew Denis Villeneuve's mind because these are like images straight from Blade Runner. Um, yeah, I did not, especially the ship making one. I did not shipyard. see yeah. his name credited in the movie at all. Um, but um, again, you know, uh, now you know where he got his inspiration from, um, because I think even mm -hmm. the opening shot is like that. It's exactly that. Right. Um, which is interesting. Um, but he did uh, he, he did this uh, crazy series of uh, straight down aerial photographs of uh, crop circles and air and, and, and uh, um, irrigation patterns. And that's just incredible mm -hmm. to me. Um, and these like. Um, um, limestone uh, what is it um these these uh um in italy these uh what is it called um i, I forgot the english word now the pulse? um yeah anyway um so uh, lots of cool stuff here um and then some so later on i mean i'm still very uh, looking for more stuff and then i found a couple of again photographers that go more in 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 divergent directions here so like this is a famous japanese photographer he he, he took a, he took photos of tokyo without anybody in it without any people in it and i have no idea how he does that um, i don't know if it's through photo manipulation um uh, or if he just waits for the right time when there's really nobody in the yep. frame i have no idea or he takes like 100 pictures and then erases the people out um whatever he does it's really interesting um thematically um taking these or he just waits for the coronavirus yeah, exactly <laughs> that's easier right um, but he takes these photographs and if you know these cities usually they're very, like incredibly overpopulated right there's people everywhere <laughs> but having having them just like stand there without anything um is is super interesting and um and I got all his books again. Again, I found these in, in bookstores, these these things. Um, it's really, really interesting um, what these people can say through it. And Daido Moriyama is a very famous uh, street photographer. He kind of one of the first. And I just, I don't know, this is kind of what I'm drawn to a lot these days. Um, these kind of moments mm. uh, in time and uh, these really strong graphics. I mean, I'm, I'm actually reminded a lot of a lot of your stuff. I think his stuff is a bit more dynamic in the way he, he approaches his subjects. Um, but in terms of how he pushes the light and the dark, it reminds me actually very much of, of what you have, um, which is interesting in itself. So um, this is a, another German photographer who took these, who, who did these two very interesting series about um, like these walls of buildings in Hong Kong, where he uses a very long lens uh, to shoot these residential complexes. Um, and, and that's that's pretty crazy. Um, I don't know if again he uses Photoshop to to make these larger than life, um, and he also did this series more recently about people squeezed in like Japanese trains, how they look completely overcrowded, and he takes these in incredibly interesting photographs of um, people mm -hmm. squeezed against the windows because it's so full, and, um, and this kind of stuff really I don't know this is really interesting <laughs> because uh, the kind of like this guy showing him the finger here that down here that's pretty interesting um it, it, it's interesting the i don't know what it says about what hu humans and and the moment he captures anyway so these are kind of just one of my uh, favorites and and stuff i've been exploring over the like uh, last one or two decades really um and, and let me know what what you want, want me to click on for you and we can we can dive into some of your inspirations yeah, well, it's just it's just amazing how different um, 
what we're drawn to. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I also, um, I also, there, there, there are yeah. definitely similarities. Oh right? yeah, yeah. I mean, I have, I didn't, I didn't include uh, like uh, Fan Ho or Henri Cartier Bresson. I didn't include them because, I mean, of, of, of course, I looked at those as well. But you already had them on here, so I was happy to yeah. see some. Well, let's 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 go into the Bresson. Yeah. Um, I mean, everybody should and know just, him. He's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, they, they should, but I, I mean, I think a lot of people don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's uh, good. Just because, you know, they're not into mm -hmm. photography. I mean, a lot of people are painters, exactly. uh, sculptors, uh, uh, yeah. you know, he's uh, amazing. illustrators. But so he, you know, he's probably, I mean, photography has been around for mm -hmm. only less than 200 years. So, you know, he he's probably one of the, he, you know, one of the, 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 the best yeah, yeah, you know yeah. in my opinion and i think if you ask anybody a lot of people would yeah. name him but um, the moments he but captures, basically he's yeah. just a uh he ha you know he he has a book called the decisive moment mm -hmm. and that's exactly kind yeah. of what he is about is the decisive mm -hmm. moment um and he's been obviously all over the place yeah. uh and he um just the way, just the way he composes, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, he waits for the shot. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not just accidental, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times he'll say, "This is a great composition. I'm going to wait till somebody walks into the frame." Um, it's not just purely coincidental, um, but I would definitely check him out because you know you can think of you know for your wider shots and mm -hmm. for your establishing shots. I mean. If you're trying to tell a story, all you need is silhouettes. You don't actually have to be a character artist yeah, to put exactly. a silhouette there that works. You know, right. I mean, you can see already in all these um, that, you know, it's not always about, you know, you don't need to, to have a perfect rendering of a character, yeah. but it adds so much. Um, it just completely takes, it gives a story. Mm. You know? Yeah, the story aspect so, is just so incredible in these. Yeah, and I feel like concept art really needs more of that. Mm. Uh, it just really needs to tell more story. I mean, obviously, there's the design aspect, which we'll cover in another episode. Mm. But, you know, storytelling wise, I mean, some of these photographers are really telling a, a really good story here, um, if you're willing to listen. So if we go back, um, uh, another favorite of mine is um, Arnold Newman. That one. Uh, so Arnold Newman wow. is... You know, he is, uh, sort of, they say he's kind of the pioneer of environmental portraits, oh. meaning yeah, uh, yeah. He, he, you use the environment uh, to reflect what that person is about mm -hmm. that you're shooting subject, right? So um, if you look at the one on the far right, uh, uh, if you just click, click on that, that's Igor Stra Stravinsky. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way it's composed uh, is just like, it's as perfect as it can be mm. to me uh and left uh go back one um and so you know uh, 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 uh if you go to the one in the middle yeah that one so that's that's i am pay the architect oh okay wow so the way he yeah, frames yeah. it it really feels quite structured and architectural um uh, so it's it a lot of this yeah, is, yeah. is is reflecting what that artist is and i would encourage everybody to check it out mm. and go left fantastic uh, or, or go back yeah and that the first uh, the first one on the left so this is interesting so this guy um uh, so they asked him to shoot this guy uh and he refused be uh, because he was part of the nazi uh, oh. party this this mm -hmm. person uh, i don't know his name but um he refused initially because he didn't want to be any part of it. Mm -hmm. But he said, okay, I'm going to go shoot it. And he lit it in a way where mm -hmm. uh, it looked lit from both sides, but he, have him, he had him move closer and closer to him so that it, it kind of took the middle and made it kind of like a shadow. So he, he looks quite satanic mm -hmm. kind of here. <laughs> yeah. and, but he did this on purpose. Yeah. Uh, and he's using it to reflect how he actually truly felt about this person. Mm. And I think that is powerful mm. as a photograph. I mean, the way that he can manipulate it in that way to reinforce that, you know, when you look at this person, you don't like him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You don't like him, right? Mm. So, I mean, he, he's using all of this. So, I, you know, I've only saved a couple pins, mm. uh, but enough for you 
all to take a look and say, you know, if you enjoy their work. I mean, I I have pretty much everybody I've pinned, I have their books. Right. It, it's really valuable for photography to get the books because mm. you're not going to get that much from these pins, you know? Like, yeah. the image is small. It's a starting off point, um, right? I would encourage you to do that. Yeah. You know, those are the things you get books. On. Okay, let's go back. I don't want to spend too long. That's okay. We have uh, a go few. Back to the main. Um, so, uh, you know, one of my favorites, everybody's favorites, Annie Leibovitz. Oh, yeah. Um, you, you can't really go wrong, right? I mean, yeah, obviously so many famous everybody photographs. kind of knows her work. But what I really, I mean, she's also, this is could be construed as uh, environmental portraits. But if you go to the second one to the left of this, like, airplane, um, and... And, it, you know, it, it just looks like a plane, you know. A lot of these photos, you have to understand the reason behind yeah, it. Yeah. And this is a shot of her girlfriend um, uh, who had cancer, you know, coming back uh, uh, on the plane um, to get treatment. Um, and it's just powerful in the sense that she was willing to share her personal life mm -hmm. like that and to document it in a way where most people wouldn't do um, and I find it to be, you know, it's not always about, you know, how the shots composed and how cool it is. It's about the story and the, the emotions you're trying to show. Right. And I, I honestly want to see more of that in concept. <laughs> I really yeah, do. Yeah. And, and I'm going to try to do that. Right. Uh, but I, I encourage everyone to try to do that because that would just make concept art better. Right. Um, go back. Uh, and, you know, like, she shoots obviously a lot. You know, she shot the, the famous John Lennon shot. Right. Um, oh, I, I was Yoko Ono, yeah. uh, Mick Jagger. You know, all these people. I mean, you can look for yourself. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, think you know, it's. I think just people have seen a lot of her photographs already, just because they're so famous. Um, is yeah. is that Yo-Yo Ma? I yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah. But of course. Again, I'm not, you know. Yeah, it's really you know. it, it has to be, right? Yeah, it has to be, right? You know, immediately, <laughs> like, this it has to be him. Uh, fantastic, okay. Whoopi Goldberg. Um, yeah, I mean, people have, you know, I, I'll, I'll point out the ones that I think are, are, mm. are extra special to look at. Uh, and we can go to Richard Avedon. Uh, wait, oh, yeah. In the middle. So he's, you know, he's been known for his fashion mm. photography. And he's known for you know, movement. Yeah, they didn't used to do a lot of movement right. um, of in fashion back then. Right. And he, you know, he incorporated all that movement. Wow. And I think a lot of those poses are still really feel fresh. Yeah. To me, even now. You, did, you don't see that and much these days. Yeah. Exactly. So I think this is, you know, this inspires me when I pose things, mm. you know, to, to, to look at it, to get some inspiration from. And, you know, he does a lot of portraits, you know, of guys with beads. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I, you know, he's known for it. But, uh, you know, again, do your own due diligence. If you enjoy it, check it out. Look at more. I mean, they're, you know, again, they all have sort of books of their work that you can check out. And it's not that expensive. Right. So. Oh, um, if if okay. if all it is, go to a bookstore and just go through the photography section and really pick out these guys. That's and, and if just... you can find a bookstore now. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> well, that's that's another problem. Yeah. Um, go to Dennis Stock real quick. So um, so oh, everybody's seen yeah, this yeah, picture yeah. of you know, James, James Dean. Dean. Um, but I wanted to include this because I wanted people to see if you go back one, and go to the other oh. one. Uh, that is how much it's marked up and how much it's uh, uh, dodged and burned. Oh, the, um, how to push the values. He's, he's Exactly. Uh, so this is like Photoshop, but back then there was no Photoshop. So this is the printer getting these notes, and then he's going, oh, yeah. okay, I got to push here. Do that. There's so even the story the here, end, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you and you can probably do a search and you'll find the story of, you know. Mm. But this, is, this happens with everybody. Right. Every... You know, every photographer back then would do stuff like this. So it's not just like this magical negative right. that you just print over and over again. That's why, in the end, the printer was also a very valuable artist. Right. Because the printer, like the best photographers need the best printers. Right. If they don't have that, they, they their shots can't, it won't exist. Right. So, um, so I encourage everybody to take a look at it. Mm. Uh, obviously, in his own right, he's a good photographer, but he's not my favorite. Um, uh, you can just go to like uh, Robert. 
I, I don't even know how to spell. <laughs> yeah, let's not let's not no, ruin no, his. But, you're, but I mean, he, oh, he did know, this he's one. Famous. Yeah. Yeah, he's famous for the the kiss at the 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 Hotel de Ville, uh, and you know he. It's the epitome of street photography. Mm, yeah, yeah. Really just sitting there going, oh, shot. So um, That's quite a moment to and, capture. And a lot of these, they, they just catch the moments. And, you know, it's very romantic. And I would just encourage people to check it out. Uh, you see, even left. even famous photographers take dog yeah. photos. So, Yeah, it's <laughs> perfect. Love it. Um, go, back. Uh, go to Sally Mann real quick. So I don't know if you've heard of Sally Mann, but um, wow. she's a very uh, sort of more artistic photographer yeah. um, and she, quite controversial. Uh, if you click on the third one. This one? Yeah, that one. So basically, uh, her husband got multiple uh, sclerosis mm -hmm. um, and she's sort of shooting him and documenting his illness. Um, and it's just a, a really poignant way of showing his body mm. and the decay and and uh, you know it's it's very arty right go go back and then click the first one so this is another shot of him except you know the the, the way she prints the the photo mm. uh basically it's you know literally showing the decay right, of the body right, yeah so um so you know it's just one of those things where you know She's very, uh, you know, she shows a lot of death mm, and, mm. and a lot of, um, go back one, uh, you know, uh, the one right in the middle in the water. Yeah, that's her daughter. Wow. Um, and, but, it, you know, she's not dead. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but... she makes it look like that. Uh, and, and she really wants you to think. Mm. Um, and I think that that's a very powerful, you know way to be uh and and you know this this is very this is artwork to me mm -hmm. um go back and back one more so you know check it out obviously uh you know the, all the pins are there right um let's see uh da, 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 a fan ho you oh know, yeah can't forget that i mean he's a uh i mean his shots uh, i mean he's ch he's chosen sort of hong kong as the backdrop obviously is such a in those times, uh, industrial mm. and uh, uh, just the way things were, it just lends itself to great shots. And he was such a good, you mm. know, he would compose in such a good. I mean, you, I know you, you definitely know. Yeah, him. yeah, definitely. Uh, and but you can just see, you know, all this lends itself to inspire you mm. to make your next piece of art, maybe a little bit more right. storytelling, more drama, right. uh, whatever speaks to you. Uh, go back. Don't want to spend too long on yeah, any yeah. one of these. Um, but if you look at uh, Michael Kenna, have you heard of Michael Kenna? Mm, not pro by well, name. Yeah. So he's another sort of you know uh, he sh just shoots wow. um, you know places and he's one you know he's one of like pretty well known and and his sh uh, his shots are quite uh, big as well mm. in, in in terms of their size um, and. Uh, I mean, I like the way he shoots. I like the way he looks at things um, and his compositions. But obviously, when it comes to these shots, I mean, I, I like them, but uh, it it has less um, story mm -hmm. to me. Um, it's just more yeah, yeah, about yeah. the place. Yeah. Um, so if you go back. Okay, so da, 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 I think I think, uh, go to Tom Bur Burrell. The, the, yeah, that one. So oh, I really okay. like his shots yeah. um, uh, because not only he composes it well, but a lot of times he he will let things go out of focus, mm -hmm. and he will let things um, it does things don't need to be perfect mm. uh, in order to be an effective shot. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, and I'm playing that with that right now. Sometimes taking things out of focus mm -hmm. actually makes them simplif uh, right. it simplifies the form, right. and it may actually say more. Um, than you think because everybody's so infatuated with sharpness mm -mm -mm. Yeah. that sometimes the blurry shots are the ones that really get you to look yeah, at yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it's trying to make out what, it, it's the know? same thing with the sketch right like if you if you leave something loose or undefined it it, it helps your imagination to um, take this 
to a different place, right? So I think it's the same thing, right? Yeah, I, I, it's just gorgeous. His work is gorgeous. And I, I haven't pinned all their yeah, work, yeah. right? I remember Elliot uh, Irvin. We'll, I remember. Yeah, well, well, let's end with that. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, he's fantastic. I mean, you can look at it, look at these small thumbnails yeah. and you can already, you don't even need to look yeah, at them yeah, any exactly. bigger and you know what they are. That's successful. Mm. Now, whether that makes you feel something or not, then, then it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody has their own but i mean in this stuff it's just some of the things that inspired us yeah exactly uh, and, and inspired us to do what we do mm. uh and hopefully it can help you uh get a glimpse of something new exactly right. um, because i think a lot of times uh too many people hold these things close to their chests mm. and and nobody really knows and nobody can know about every field right uh, and photography i think is actually very very closely related to right. what we do yeah. um so i mean it, i think you know, I just, yeah i mean it it, it it doesn't like we, we don't want to say necessarily that to be a good concept artist you need to be a photographer or you need to be interested in photography right that's not that's not no, no, what no. we're necessarily trying to say but it's just um i think it, it just it just has helped us i think and and it has just been something we have been personally exploring and appreciating quite a bit again we have like you even to to a way higher degree than than myself i think and for way longer um but so th that just kind of again we want just want to share what we're inspired by what we um personally yeah, look absolutely. at and in, instead of just kind of like uh, uh holding it holding like kind of like uh having it on our hard drive and our bookshelf and like saying like ah oh, this is uh, this is ours right and nobody else yeah. can know right it's it's really not about that and um, we're, we're happy to share um our influences and our what inspires us right because it's it's different for every person right and and you yeah exactly and that's why this is going to be a multi-part exactly. series like on the next part, we're going to talk about design related mm. inspiration, and then we'll talk about artistic yeah. related inspiration. Uh, you know, so it's, you know, you'll see everything that inspires us and you can look at our work and see, you know, maybe where that's shown through. Yeah. Um, hopefully. <laughs> maybe hopefully it helps you figure out something for yourself. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Exactly. It should be an encouragement to, to yeah, really absolutely. what inspires you. I, I want you, you to and, feel excited. Yeah, exactly. You know, just, and just, um, I mean, uh, please share with us if you have some, for those of you that are really into photography, either you take photos yourself or you, you are inspired by a lot of uh, photographers, please do share them in the comments or, or um, on, I don't know, on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube here. And, and do let us know. We always um, would be would be cool to see what other people look at. Right. I mean, there's so many yeah, more that other people, if you have inspiration, yeah, that we have not looked at all the photographers. Share exactly. It, yeah. So and if you if you enjoyed this episode, as usual, uh, like, comment and subscribe. And uh, again, this was a big episode for, I think, uh, perfect for for YouTube. Lots of stuff to look at. And uh, thanks so much for for tuning into this first part of the inspiration series. And uh, we'll see you guys as usual in the next week. Take care. Take care. Bye.